welcome everyone uh, to our Masters of International Business webinar. Uh, I do appreciate you joining us to learn a little bit more about our program. Uh, my name is Ryan Christian. I'm the graduate recruiter for the program. And we're gonna go ahead and jump right on in. <clears throat> and so first I would like to introduce Dr. Junaid Erigen, our faculty director, and I will let him go ahead and introduce himself. Well, welcome. Thank you for joining us in today's info session regarding Master of International Business. This is Junaid Evergen, the faculty director of the MIB program, and I'll be giving, sharing your information on the flow of the program and the content. All right. Thank you, Junaid. Um, so today we are going to go over quite a bit of information. Uh, we're going to talk about why Robinson. Uh, we're going to go over the po program interview where we'll talk about curriculum, student experience, um, an outcome guide, the application process, tuition, tuition and financing, um, as well as at the end, uh, we will have a question and answer portion. Um, so as you come in, please make sure that you are muted uh, towards the end. You will be able to unmute yourself if you have any questions. Also, there's a chat feature. So if you do have any questions along the way, you can go ahead and place those in the chat. Um, and we will be sure to answer those at the end of our session today. Um, and the next introduction I want to make, uh, we are joined by a very special guest today. Um, we are joined by a 2021 alum, Gabrielle Bestos. Um, and so if you would go ahead and introduce yourself and anything that you'd like to say to our group today. Hi everybody, my name is Gabrielle Bastos, as Ryan said. I recently graduated from MIB. I also got my undergrad uh, managerial sciences at Georgia State. So just continue that track. Uh, looking forward to being here, hopefully answering some questions from the perspective of a student and uh, working as a project manager today at Associated Credit Union. So in the financial industry and it might be really helped start my, uh, my career track. So thank you for the opportunity and excited to talk about the experience with you guys. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us. Um, and again, we'll hear a little bit more from Gabrielle towards the end in our question and answer portion. So to start off, we're going to talk a little bit about why Robinson. And we absolutely cannot talk about Robinson without talking about Atlanta. Um, so for those of you guys who are not from Atlanta and who may not know, um, Atlanta is located on the east coast of the United States, just north of Florida. Um, it is the ninth largest city in the U.S. and by far one of the most affordable. Um, we also have the world's busiest airport which is going to make for cheap airfare and easy and convenient flights. Um, Atlanta is also going to be home to 40 corporate innovation centers, um, and they're projecting by 2040, 1.9 million jobs are expected to be created here. Atlanta is also home to 29 Fortune 500 and 1,000 companies. Um, and in 2020, these 29 companies generated an aggregate revenue of $429 billion. Um, also, you'll find that some of the world's largest corporations call Atlanta home, such as Coca-Cola, Cox Enterprise, Delta Airlines, Equifax, Home Depot, and many, many more. And so here on this screen, you'll see some of our rankings um, and just a few that I would like to highlight. Um, so we do have number one best state for doing business. So a publication that covers corporate site selection and relocation ranked Georgia as the number one state in the U.S. Uh, for business for the eighth consecutive year. Um, also, we have actually increased from number six to number one, most attractive metro for Gen Zers. Um, and this basically means that if you're looking at relocating to Atlanta, um, this is one of the greatest places um, to either progress or further your career. All right. So speaking of Atlanta, um, here you'll see a snapshot of downtown Atlanta. Um, and around the borders of that picture, you'll see just a few of the companies that we're working with and putting our students in connection with. Um, so they're going to be coming in for job fairs. They're going to be providing mentors, also participating in our alumni association as well. Uh, we do have 80,000 alumni, and many of those are in leadership positions. Uh, they're going to be giving back to our institution by providing our students with internship opportunities, experiential learning opportunities, as well as coming in for guest speakers. Uh, we have these connections with these companies and putting you in front of them is a part of what we do here at Robinson. So speaking a little bit more about Georgia State University, for those of you guys that do not know, uh, we are the largest university and business school in the Southeast U.S., also top 10 largest universities in the United States uh, with over 50,000 students as well as 1,700 graduate students. 
Uh, we are at the state. If you look at the picture towards the right, um, as you'll see that logo, uh, we are now the Georgia State Panthers, but in our history over 100 years ago, uh, we were the Georgia Evening College Owls. Um, and so with that being said, um, our program has been dedicated to students um, who are working professionals who may be balancing work, family, and any other obligations. Um, and so here you'll find a program that is dedicated to students, um, and that is deep in our roots. So most of our programs are geared towards working professionals. So between our longevity and our focus on working with professionals, uh, we have amassed alumni of over 80,000, uh, excuse me, 80,000 students with about 40,000 here in the Metro Atlanta. Uh, so there's gonna be quite a bit of opportunities to make connections when it's time to start or advance your career. So on this slide, you'll see a little bit more about our community here, it's quite diverse. Um, so just shy of 1,700 students for our spring 2023 um, cohort, you'll see that we are 54% female, 46% male, 66% United States, 34 domestic. Um, and of our domestic population, they're going to be represented from 75 different countries. Our, excuse me, our international population is 75 different countries. Our domestic is 29 states. Um, and the average years is going to be 31 years. And to the right, you'll see all of our graduate programs. Um, so there's something here for everybody. Next, we'll talk a little bit more about your success team. This is going to be the entire um, international business team. So we've already heard uh, from Dr. Junate, who's the faculty director for the Master of International Business. Then you'll see myself. Um, I'm the graduate recruiter for the program. So pretty much I'm here to assist all the way from your inquiry. Um, until you're accepted into the program. Next, you'll hear from Jermaine Clark, who is the Assistant Director of Student Experiences, um, as well as Michael McCree, who's the Academic Advisor for the program. And so he's gonna be the person that you'll reach out to for any questions that you have about registration or courses. And also we have Justina Mason, who's over student support, who's our student support specialist. Um, and she's actually taking the time to join us today. Um, and so, Justina, I will let you introduce yourself and kind of talk a little bit about your role um, and what student experience has to offer. Hello, welcome. We're very excited to have you join our Robertson family. So as the student support specialist, I am going to be a part of engage you, engaging you through, uh, through different site visits, through other professional development programming that we're going to have throughout the college. As well as if you have any issues or concerns, don't feel, don't hesitate to reach out. I'm here to help you to become aware of the resources so that way you can be successful. So welcome. Thank you, Justina. And we'll hear a little bit more from her uh, towards the end of our session today. So why the Master of International Business? So we typically find um, that our students fall in one of these three categories. Um, so career starters. So for those students who maybe just graduated from undergrad, um, looking to upskill themselves and prepare themselves to um, you know, launch into their career. Uh, we also see career changers, so uh, students who may have been in one career field for a while um, and they're looking to make a pivot. And so, you know, wanting to gain a graduate degree to upskill themselves and, and make that adjustment. Um, we also see career accelerators. So these are students who are already kind of in their career season um, and they're looking to come back to school to gain an advanced degree um, to accelerate, accelerate their careers. And so now we're going to talk a little bit more specifically about the curriculum, um, and I'm going to turn it over now to uh, to Junaid. Thank you, Ryan. Yes, welcome again. Uh, in this info session, at this point, we'll be I'll be describing you the kind of courses and the flow of content you'll experience at the MIB program. Well, to start off with, the program consists of a pre-program foundations module. Uh, and then you select one of the three career track curricula. And uh, let me uh, describe what each of these are going to be for you. Well, what is the pre-program foundations module? This is particularly important uh, and required for those of you who are not coming from a business uh, undergrad. Well, uh, it will basically give you the foundational elements and concepts of different functions and disciplines of business such as uh, key concepts in economics, business and management in general, marketing, finance, and accounting. And there's also a session on case method. 
all of these uh, modules are synchro asynchronous and self-paced. So you will, once admitted in, you will have access to all the resources that you would need to go through and take uh, mini quizzes to make sure that you complete the foundations module before your coursework starts. You will have ample time to be able to do this before coursework uh, actually kicks off. So uh, in the program, once you're admitted in, at that point, you'll make a selection of one of the three tracks uh, which you'll specialize in. And if we could move the slide, Ryan. Just one, yeah. What are these? The first one is global supply chain and logistics. Second, international entrepreneurship and innovation. And the third one, global management consultancy. What these mean are that depending on which of these three tracks you choose, you'll be taking courses specific for those tracks. In the global supply chain, supply chain and logistics uh, track, this is particularly for those of you who would want to establish collaboration between firms in the supply chain, connect suppliers, customers, and a wide variety of partners across the globe. In the entrepreneurship and innovation track, this is for those of you with a keen interest in a new venture and who want to capitalize on business opportunities, no matter where they arise on your own. Or for those of you who want to be part of the corporate world and lead the internationalization of uh, small, medium, and large firms by acting as the scout, uh, coming up with new business opportunities and working on them in different uh, markets around the world. The third track, which is global management consultancy, this focuses on the quantitative aspect of management consultancy. And for it's particularly for those who would aim to develop skills and competencies in the area of management consulting. If you want to be part of this uh, track, you'll have a chance to understand uh, how to operate management consultancy with a focus on projects in global business development, management transformation, etc. Now, uh, in summary, in other words, uh, your first step is completion of the pre-program foundations module. If you already have a business degree coming into the program, it's not a requirement, but a recommendation to refresh your learnings about these foundations. Then uh, the curricula will start in the fall, uh, and I'll go through the courses that each one of these track students will need to take throughout their program. So the first one, track A. The MIB program, Global Supply Chain and Logistics Track. Now, at Robinson College of Business, most courses operate on a mini semester basis. So, what that means is the fall semester is divided into two mini semesters, eight weeks each. In the fall, in the, the two mini semesters consist of two core courses and two track specific courses. The color coding that you'll be seeing in the slides represents the core courses, which means all of the students belonging to the same cohort starting at the same time will be taking at the same time as a cohort. The courses you see in yellow uh, boxes are those courses that only the, those students who choose the specific track are going to take. In the following slides, as I explained, you will see that different tracks will have different courses in the yellow boxes. So if, we, if I get started with the coursework, uh, the first course you'll be taking is will be an introduction into the international business environment, along with a managing logistics and supply chain course from the Department of Management. Once the first mini semester is over, in the second mini semester of the fall semester, you'll be taking the course on international business negotiations, and the track specific course would be strategic sourcing and procurement. That will be the end of your first semester. In the spring semester, again, split into two mini semesters, you'll be taking doing business in emerging markets course along with critical thinking for value creation international business course. And in the second mini semester, there'll be a capstone policy and strategy course of uh, international business along with the project management course from the Department of Management. Once these two semesters are over, summer consists of two courses, one of them being an international business field study, and the other one being special topics in international business. The special topics uh, course basically is designed every year with the content that is relevant for the time. So it may be focusing on future of work in international business. It may be focusing on specifically 
new initiatives regarding uh, clim climate change or, or other sustainability issues. So the whole idea there is to make sure that the cohort hears and works on issues that are relevant of the time as they take that course. Now, all of these courses are uh, in the evening. The letters W, M, or TH, as you see in the boxes, represent the day of the week that the courses are offered. And all of the courses start at 5.30 p.m. Uh, and end at 9.45. So these are about three and a half, four hour sessions per course uh, that is done in an in-person format. And if we can move on, uh, Ryan, and an additional element that you'll get uh, experience in will be the data badges. Now, what are these? These are badges that you'll, ne you'll need to uh, complete to be able to graduate uh, as offered by the GSU library. These are asynchronous training uh, materials. Once you complete, you basically get a data badge, which you can put post on your LinkedIn account or add to your resume. So this is to make sure that you have at least the basic understanding of the fundamentals of data management, data analysis, which is of uttermost importance uh, today and moving forward. So that's the global supply chain and logistics track in, in a nutshell. The second track is entrepreneurship and innovation. Now the courses in light blue are exactly the same as I told you. So you'll be taking the same courses as before. What different courses will you take? based on this track will be offered through the Entrepreneurship and Innovation Institute at uh, Robinson College of Business. And in the fall semester, the courses will be Innovation, Creativity and, innovation, uh, and Imagination and the second course, Innovation and Design Thinking. And in the spring semester, these will be coupled with the Entrepreneurship, Venture Development and Management course. So the rest of the courses uh, in the fall, spring and summer semesters coming with the IB code, International Business Code, will be courses you'll be taking as a full cohort. The data badge, obviously, is again a requirement for graduation. Last but not least, the third track. Now, in this track, again, the core uh, courses are the same, but in the track courses, you'll be taking business intelligence followed by business modeling in the fall. Both of these courses will uh, get you into the world of uh, data analytics uh, and modeling using data and information uh, tech technologies. And the project management course will be taken in the spring semester. The rest are all the same. Here, I'd like to make a note. Uh, we're working on something that might turn out to be highly exciting for uh, some of you. Now, currently our whole program is conducted in person at the world-class facilities we have in the Buckhead area of the uh, Greater Atlanta. Now, the courses will be in person, but for next year, we are currently working on to be able to offer the courses in a simulcast or high flex mode, which means if, if uh, we'll be able to complete it by next year, you'll be able to attend the courses online as well. I do not have a definite answer, definite uh, information on this, but I'm just sharing this with you at this point to make a note of it because we will be following up with all the attendees of the webinar uh, and the webinars to come in terms of uh, the latest we have. And once things uh, crystallize, obviously we'll make a definite uh, sharing with all of you. Now, all the courses, as we said, is one year format. It's 12 months from August to July, 10 courses, and it's a cohort experience as a whole and done in the world-class facility we have in the professional education center in Bucket. And as Ryan uh, mentioned, this program is designed for professionals, which means it will also allow you to continue to work in your prof either on your personal initiative or your own company, or as a professional employee of uh, a corporation. And with that, the, here's a glimpse of the faculty that you'll be seeing and meeting along the way. Uh, Edward Wang will be the first professor you'll get to meet in the fall when you come in, followed by Vandana. Uh, Ed, Edward will take you into the world of uh, international business 
and one that will take you into the uh, issue of cross-cultural communication and negotiations. Salama will be coming in, uh, talking about uh, doing business in emerging markets. I will come in uh, with the critical thinking course. The Meiji will support uh, with the legal uh, aspects of IB. Cecilia will be doing the strategy course. Uh, Evaristo Doria will be doing the field study and Murad Dagli will be doing the special topics. As you can see from the pictures or from the names, the faculty itself is highly diverse, highly international, uh, with bringing in a lot of corporate experience along with academic competencies. And after that, I'd also like to add in uh, information about the certificate that those of you who select the entrepreneurship track will be able to get. By simply completing the coursework designed for you, you'll be able to, you'll be eligible to get the uh, Disruptive Innovation and Entrepreneurship Certificate from Robinson College of Business, in addition to the master's degree you will get in international business. So that's uh, designed in, in such a way for you. And data badges, as I uh, referred to earlier, here are examples of the topics or themes of the data badges, like data literacy series. Uh, there are multiple badges. We expect you to have to complete at least two of these during your study. As I said, these are offered in asynchronous format in self-paced mode. What is very exciting about uh, your experience, your upcoming experience at Robinson will be what we do on the experiential learning side. On, uh, we make sure that the cohort gets experience by visiting companies of different industries, of different sizes, and of, of different compositions to get a feel of the actual work going behind uh, international business in terms of how they operate, the kinds of issues they have, and seeing them at work uh, by visiting them at their factories, at their headquarters at their, at their sites. And in addition to these, the program will also offer you some mentorships. Uh, we make sure that we also uh, expose you to nonprofits on the service side and some exciting visits, which I'll uh, hand over to Justina, maybe to speak a few words about it. But before I do that, the overall theme, the overall governing concept, of international business will always focus on sustainability and responsible decision making. This is an umbrella concept uh, which you will feel in each and every course you will take during the program. The implications of the course content material as far as sustainability and responsible decision making is concerned. And at this point, uh, before moving on to the uh, uh, maybe the Savannah visit, Justina, you may want to mention about that in a minute. But before moving on that side, uh, Gabriella, thank you for being with us because I can go for hours. I can go for a lot of time, obviously, talking about the different coursework and the content and everything we do. But you've been through uh, all these courses uh, and you had experiences, particularly during the COVID period as well, in a different form. But uh, would you want to share anything about the program content uh, and your overall experience uh, at this point? Sure, yeah. Uh, the program at the time when I was completing it, because we were just coming out of the pandemic, it was in person, but it was very different. So we did have a lot of speakers. We didn't have a lot of opportunities to go visit businesses, but the difference was a lot of speakers came in. And so what I really enjoyed with the program is that we were able to um, connect with them and they not only presented during the classes, but they um, reserved, you know, the professor reserved uh, time for us to speak with the speakers. And especially if we resonated with that, area that they were working in, we were able to connect with them and discuss their everyday experience on that job and how it relates to what we were learning in class. Um, some other things is, even though you're seeing all of the, the tracks that they're talking about here, you also get to connect with uh, students from other programs. So there are MBAs who have um, international business tracks that might be taking some of the classes that you're taking. So you get to meet a lot of different people from many different areas and not just 
the classmates that you'll have in the MIB program. So that was um, something huge for me as well as a takeaway um, in addition to the classes was being able to connect with people from so many different industries and even speak to them in regards to things that I was learning in class and seeing how they were applying in their areas. So those were some of the uh, the big takeaways for me um, as far as my experience. That's great. Which track had you chosen during your study, Gabrielle? It was the supply chain and logistics track. Great. Is there any uh, particular course that you remember uh, that kind of you, helping you out as you uh, in your career, as you're working in the company you're at? I, well, because I, I'm a project manager, of course, the project management class really helped to structure what I do on a day-to-day -day basis because um, learning it from a textbook and, and doing it in real life are, are two very different things a lot of times. So um, the class really helped with that. But on the MIB side, um, the negotiations course, um, specifically learning about different cultures and their negotiation styles and having the case analysis of those and partnering with different uh, classmates to go through different negotiation exercises was really uh, beneficial as well in negotiating salaries and also negotiating contracts with other vendors. So uh, those were two of the, the highlights for me. Great, great. Thank you very much, Gabriella. I'm sure you'll be receiving some questions along the way as well. So I don't want to take that time uh, for that. But, but it's all about doing, it's all about being in the field, seeing it. And that's what we try to do, especially, thank God, COVID is over, so we're back on the roads. Right, Justina? And one of the things that we just did with this year's cohort uh, about a month ago was our site visit to Savannah. Oh, moving too fast. There we go. You want to say a few things about that, Justina? Yes, yes. This year we had an amazing opportunity of taking a great group of students down to Savannah. Um, they had the opportunity of visiting DIRT, which is doing it right this time, uh, Savannah B and Georgia Port Authority. And so they got to see the ins and outs of how an, a business operates on a daily basis. And it was such an amazing experience. I, I think the students really loved playing with the bees, but it was also a great opportunity for students to bond with um, their colleagues in other classes because we did have some students from Masters of um, Business Administration come and a couple other classes. So it was a great opportunity to network and engage while also learning about how business um, operations happen daily. So it was a great opportunity and I encourage you, you, all of you to get involved. And, you know, if you see opportunities like this to definitely attend because they're worth it. Thank you, Justina. So we're back to you, Ryan. Thank you, Junaid. And thank you, Justina. Um, so, you know, we talked a little bit about, you know, the curriculum and what happens inside the classroom. Uh, now let's talk a little bit about, you know, some of those extra things that happen outside of the classroom. Um, and so earlier in the slides, you know, I introduced you guys just cursory uh, to um, our student experience team. Um, Justina's talked a little about student experience, about what they do. Um, so there's going to be, you know, the liaison between you, the student, and the university. Um, they'll be assisting in developing your professional skills. Um, they're going to be providing those co-curricular and extracurricular activities, you know, such as the trip to Savannah, um, case competitions, things like that. Um, they'll also be coming up with professional development workshops industry events and uh, company and site visits. Uh, they'll also be the department that will be handling all of the commencement activities. In addition um, to our student experience team, we have our Career Advancement Center um, under uh, Lauren McDowell. So she's the director of the Career Advancement Center. Um, and they're going to be doing all of that wonderful work to make sure that you are go-to-market ready once you've gotten your degree. Um, you're ready to either, you know, launch your career or do a career pivot. So they're going to work, you know, with you on your resume, uh, get you into our portal called Handshake to be able to do some, you know, looking for jobs. Uh, they'll update your, your LinkedIn profile um, and help you come up with your elevator pitch. So when you are at those networking events, uh, you can best kind of describe yourself and where you're wanting to go. Uh, they'll also do some job prep work. Uh, you know, again, renovating that resume, uh, building your job search plan. So not just kind of aimlessly searching for jobs, but searching for the right type of jobs, uh, making sure that you're putting your best foot forward as you're applying for those jobs. 
and making sure that, you know, as you're going to these career fairs and info sessions, um, you're getting the most out of them. And then, like I said, you know, towards the end, uh, you'll get ready for your go to market. Um, so employment engagement events um, that also help you in joining some professional association. Um, a lot of those are either free or discounted while you are a student. Um, and then you'll be on your way to success. Uh, and so, you know, I, I just want to ask uh, Gabrielle, you know, while you were in the program and kind of getting ready uh, for graduation, um, how were these events and, you know, did you find them, you know, pretty successful? Yeah, uh, I definitely recommend if you were pursuing um, any of the master's programs and specifically it might be um, at Georgia State, these events were extremely helpful in setting up my my resume and putting together my LinkedIn profile, the best way to, to represent based on my experiences and what I've gained so far from the program. Um, so I definitely recommend the biggest ones that I that were takeaways for me were the uh, resume building workshops they had, um, mock interview sessions as well were very beneficial. So I definitely recommend um, attending these and, and being intentional in, in taking notes and being present in that because you'll gain a lot from it. Thank you, Gabriel. And so here we'll look at some, some key statistics. Um, so as you'll see, you know, our students reporting 77% employed within three months. Um, you'll see the top quartile average is $79,825. Uh, maximum reported salary, $87,300. Um, and for our students that were, you know, already kind of in their career season and were just, you know, adding this degree to help them launch, you know, to a, a higher position, um, an increase in 22% of their average salary. Um, and to the right, you'll see some of the recent employers. So these are some of the places that our students are going. Google, Delta, CNN, Deloitte, Walmart, Coca-Cola, again, just to name a few. And to kind of underscore that, um, here are some of our, you know, recent alums from MIB. Um, so Adish Kazar, who is, you know, 2017 graduate, he's vice president at USPI Consulting. Uh, Catherine Coleman, a 2016 MIB graduate who is now vice president um, of global liquidity and cash management. Uh, Tamia Mays Ishman, um, 2014 graduate who is at Microsoft Senior Global Partner Program Manager, um, as well as Amiri Haynes, who was a 2016 graduate from MIB who's working at Equifax um, as the Director of Business Intelligence. So, you know, one of the big things that everybody asks, you know, you know, what is that investment like? Um, so we'll go over, you know, the investment summary. Um, so as far as tuition and fees, we kind of break that down in two different ways. Um, In-state residents who have lived in Georgia for more than a year or out-of-state or international students. Um, so for in-state, uh, you'll be looking at 37500 for the program in its entirety. Um, for our out-of-state students, you'll be looking at $43,500 for the entire program. Um, there is an application fee of $50, um, which will be waived for our students who are in attendance today who actually submit an application for the MIB program. So I did get some questions. I don't want to jump too far ahead of myself. So I did get some questions in the chat while we're presenting earlier. Um, so the application fee waiver will be applied for those students who actually submit a MIB application. Um, there's also a $250 seat deposit, um, which will be need to be made um, 30 days after you accept your um, seat in the, the program. Another question I get um, is about in, in financing your investment. Um, so you'll see there to the right, um, the email and the phone number for our graduate student financial services department. Um, they're gonna be assisting you with any you know federal student aid, grant plus loans or, or private education loans. Another option for, you know, financing your investment um, are merit-based scholarships, graduate research assistantship positions, and any department-specific scholarships. Um, so for the merit-based scholarships, you know, we kind of look at those um, as a part of the application. Um, it is one of our most competitive options as far as, as scholarships. Um, and those uh, we award at time of acceptance typically go out to about 10% of the class. Um, and so you'll get that information at time of acceptance. Um, if you do not receive those, you can also apply for one of the graduate research assistantship positions through Handshake. 
Um, and also there's some department specific awards. Um, these are typically for our students, you know, after their first semester, they do require a letter of recommendation from a current professor. Um, so again, you know, as you're going through your first semester, you know, make sure that um, you're keeping your academics up um, because <clears throat> you will need a letter of recommendation from a current professor to apply for those. All right, and so now we'll kind of talk about, you know, the application process step by step. Um, so again, you know, the first thing is find the application online. You can go to gradapply.gsu.edu forward slash apply. Um, there is a $50 application fee. Again, you know, for those students who apply for the MIB program that are here today, um, you will have that waived. Um, you will need to present any test scores that you may have. So GMAT or GRE are not required, but you can um, upload those if you feel like, you know, your score is pretty competitive and you want to add that as an advantage for your application. We do offer you the option of uploading those. Also for our international students, we do require an English proficiency, proficiency test. Um, we do not accept Duolingo. Um, so we look at a minimum of 90 for the TOEFL um, and a 6.5 for the IELTS. Um, and if you are from an English speaking country, we do have a list um, of countries that are exempt, such as Nigeria and Ghana. Um, also, if you've lived, worked or studied um, in an English speaking country, typically for three or four, three or more years, um, you can request to have the proficiency test waived. Um, so transcripts, we will, we do require all transcripts from undergraduate or graduate programs that you have been a part for a, and part of. Um, if you are international students, uh, they will need to be in English. Um, and so you may need to have those evaluated if they are not in English. Next, we request um, your resume. And so what you'll want to do is, you know, highlight any internships, leadership and work experience that you've had. Uh, make sure it's up to date. Make sure it kind of tells the, the time range that you were there and as well as if it was part time or full time. Uh, next, letters of recommendation. They are not required, but are recommended. Um, and again, if you do submit those, you know, let those be either either professional or academic references, um, basically someone who can speak to your skill set um, and your ability. Wasn't quite done. So next, the personal statement. Personal statement needs to be no more than 700 words. Um, and this is really a space where you can let us know a little bit more about you. Um, so your goals, why you feel like, you know, you align with the program, show any research that you've done on the program, as well as the institution. Um, and again, you know, just kind of let us see outside of, you know, the grades and, and GPA and things like that. Let us know a little bit more about you. I always suggest, you know, that you proofread or have somebody else look at it for any grammatical errors um, that may be present. Lastly, um, the video interview. Um, and so inside the application, you will be able to record your video interview. You'll be given, you know, three behavioral based questions um, and you have five minutes to answer those three questions. Um, you also have three attempts. So, you know, take your time, be in a quiet space, you know, dress appropriately as if you were going to a live interview. Um, and provide as much detail and substance as you can in your, your question, your answers to those questions. All right, so here you'll be able to see our application deadlines. Um, as Junaid said earlier, um, I think I said it before too, but this is a fall admit program. Um, and so these are all the rounds for fall of 2024. Um, so we have passed the first um, round, which is October the 16th. Uh, the next round will be January the 22nd. So that's coming up right around the corner. Uh, we have one in March um, as well as May. And then we have an extended deadline throughout the summer where we kind of just, um, you know, go through applications and rounds. Um, and so for priority consideration for graduate research assistantships, applications must be submitted by round two. Um, and for our international students, we do, you know, request that you apply no later than round three for consideration. Another cool thing that we have, you know, a lot of time I get questions from students, you know, what is a typical week like? Um, you know, what is the course load like? You know, where should I move? Um, and so we have this cool feature. If you want to take a uh, scan this QR code, um, you can connect with some of our, our current students. So we have Saran and Yatunde, who are our current students in the MIB program. Um, so if you want to kind of connect with them with any specific, you know, day in the life questions, um, you can absolutely do that. And so I'll pause for just a second if anybody wants to scan that and contact them um, for any you know, specific you know, day in the life type questions. And also while we're here, 
Um, Gabrielle, I heard that you were also, you know, a GRA while you were in the program. What was that experience like for you? It was great as a uh, additional resource of um, networking and, and connecting with professionals at GSU and even with companies outside of GSU. So I actually worked within the recruiting um, department for GSU and specifically for the master programs. So with that, I was assisting students that were interested in joining um, any of our master's programs and attending these webinars and being a, a liaison with that and providing any answers to questions that came in. So this is uh, similar territory and bringing back some memories of when I was doing that um, at GSU. Awesome, awesome, thank you. All right, so I've kind of been ping and ponging uh, through the chat, and this is one of the, the biggest questions that's been asked thus far in the chat. Um, so absolutely, thank you guys for attending. In just a quick second, we're going to switch over and do some question and answer, um, but to talk a little bit more about the application fee waiver. Um, so you will need to submit your completed application, leave the application fee unpaid, um, allow up to 10 business days for the waiver to be applied. Um, and for any questions, you can reach out to the RCB grad admissions at gsu.edu. Uh, now, one thing to note with the application fee waiver, they are content specific. Um, so I got a couple questions in the chat already for programs that are not MIB. Um, so unfortunately, um, if you attended today, the application fee waiver will only go towards MIB applications. Um, so yeah, if you submit an MIB application, go ahead and submit it, leave the fee unpaid. Um, our Admissions team will go ahead and waive that on our side if you just allow 10 business days for them to do that. Um, so again, in just a second, when we get to the question and answer portion, um, for our students who may be looking at other programs who are looking for application fee waiver, I'll drop the link in the chat for you guys um, for our application fee waiver eligible webinars that are coming up in January. Um, and you can attend one of those, um, but today is only for uh, students who are submitting applications for MIB. All right, and so now, you know, we've come to the end of uh, the presentation portion. Um, we didn't want to leave, you know, a few minutes. We've got about 15 minutes to answer any questions that you may have. Um, so you have, you know, Janae here um, who can speak to kind of curriculum in the program. I can kind of talk about all things, you know, application. Um, Justina can talk about just, um, student experience. And Gabrielle can talk about all of it um, as an alum. So if you have any questions, I do see that we have quite a few in the chat. I'll do my best to kind of address those. Um, the other option that you have um, is there's a reaction tab at the bottom to raise your hand. So you can either put your question into the chat or do the raise hand feature. Um, I'll call on you, you can come off mute and ask your question. Um, but as you guys are kind of thinking how you wanna move forward, I will address the, the questions that are already in the chat. Right, so <clears throat> quite a few. All right, so a lot of these are um, regarding uh, the application fee waiver. So again, in just a second, um, I will drop the link in the chat for you guys who are not looking at MIB if you want an application fee waiver for some of our events that are coming up. Um, let's see. Hi, can MBA human resource management applicants, oh, same, same question, I'll put that in chat. Um, so does the letter of recommendation have any weight in the admissions requirement consideration since it's not required? Absolutely a great question. Um, and so uh, Emeka, um, we take a holistic approach as we are reviewing our applications and what that means, not, no one thing outweighs another. Um, so we do look at GPA, we do look at any test scores you provide, we look at you know the length, um, of work experience you have. We look at, you know, the video interview. We look at the personal statement um, and we look at, you know, there's a recommendation. And so really you are, are judging, you know, the strength that you feel in your application. So maybe if you're a student that is just coming out of undergrad who may not have a whole lot of work experience, letters of recommendation from an employer or a professor, you know, would definitely bolster your application. Um, and so I think, you know, you have to gauge how strong you feel like your application is. Um, you know, if you have a really high GPA, you have, you know, really good work experience, you've been somewhere five, six, seven, eight years, um, and, you know, you've got that, maybe you don't need a letter of recommendation. 
Um, and so you kind of want to balance what you feel like the strength of your application is. Um, and so, you know, that's kind of from me, you know, Jeanette, did you want to weigh in on that kind of as you're looking at applications? Yeah, I mean, as Ryan said, we have we have this holistic perspective. So anything that will that you think would strengthen your application will help. Letter of recommendation is no exception on that, especially if you got work experience. A letter of rec recommendation from your employer or direct uh, supervisor is always very beneficial uh, because they worked with you. They know how you approach, how you work, and anything they can share uh, with us obviously will be an additional strength point uh, for your application. So we uh, the holistic approach is fundamental, as I said. And we also consider the applications for possible graduate assistantships as we review them. So the better, uh, the stronger your application is, the more likely you may be uh, receiving an offer of graduate assistantship that Gabriella was uh, mentioning about. And uh, with that, I mean, your statement of purpose, your letter of purpose, uh, your work experience, transcript, everything counts. Everything counts. Uh, and at the end of the day, we have a very diverse uh, cohort as we have in previous years and this year as well. So you may be coming straight out of college with relatively less uh, direct professional work experience, or you may be in your, uh, I mean, you may have some uh, work experience in your back and you may want to accelerate your career. Either way, uh, we need to, uh, you, we expect you to do your best to share with us so that we get to know you uh, the best we can. Thank you, Janae. Um, so, you know, kind of going through some of the questions, I will put, I'm going to put two links in the chat now. This first one is for, you know, all of the events that we have at Robinson. Um, if you click on that, you know, if you're not looking to put in an MIB application, um, if you're looking for other events that are application fee waiver eligible, you can click there. Um, you'll see, you know, the next events that we have start in January. Um, so you can be cognizant of that. Um, I did see another question in the chat regarding uh, application deadlines. Um, so the next application deadline is going to be January the 22nd, uh, with the next following being March uh, the 18th. I'll also put that link in the chat for you guys so you can kind of have that for yourself to kind of refer back to. Um, pull that link really quickly. There you go. I'll put that in the chat for you guys uh, again so you can have it um, personally. So... All right, so the next one is actually addressed to you, Gabrielle. Um, Gabrielle, please, if I may ask, as an alumni or ex-student, what opportunities are available for networking with other students, alumni, and industry professionals during your time? So a couple of different things. Uh, I believe there was uh, an introductory session before we started the MIB program where we were able to meet uh, classmates that were going into the program. So that's where I met a lot of those that I would have most of my classes with. And then I would also come in early to the classes. So because they're in the evenings, it was a lot easier for me to just leave work and go straight to class um, in the Buckhead um, campus. And in that sense, because I was getting there early, I was meeting a lot of other students. And uh, like I mentioned earlier, meeting uh, students in the MBAs and, and other tracks. So getting to network with them in that sense as well, or even in the in-person career services that they offer. So the resume building or the mock interview sessions, if I was attending those in person, then I would meet other students as well and network in that way um, and any of the other events at GSU as well. Awesome. Thank you, Gabrielle. Again, you know, you know, to add to, to that a little bit, you know, once admitted into the program, you will be introduced to, you know, what we call our success team um, that we talked about earlier. So student experience, you know, just seems a part of that team. Um, you also hear from our Graduate Career Advancement Center um, and be able to connect in that way as well. And you'll get a full, you know, roster of the events that are coming up. Um, and so... On that, Ryan? Yes. May I add something else? Absolutely. Uh, Another thing that's highly relevant in terms of networking and making connections is the opportunity you will have through the World Affairs Council of Atlanta. Now, that is part of, uh, situated within Robinson College of Business. And as an MIB student, you become a member of it during the course of your study, which means 
uh, you'll be able to attend many of their events, which are some of which are networking events, some of which are uh, panels or discussion roundtable kinds of things. So that's yet another resource you will have access to during your uh, study here. And each of these will be uh, adding in to possibilities of meeting people from the Atlanta business uh, community at all levels. Uh, I wanted to add that, right? Thank you, Janae. Um, and so the next question, uh, so we have about um, seven or eight minutes left. So what I will do, I'll do my best to try to get through all of these. Um, but the first thing that I want to do is to go ahead and put my email in the chat for you guys. Um, so if I'm not able to get to all of the questions, um, please feel free to reach out to me via email. But I will try my best to get through all of the questions uh, before we end our session today. Um, so if I may ask, do you accept unofficial transcripts in the application process? Um, so Joshua, yes. Um, so throughout the application process, you are able to submit your unofficial transcripts. Um, what you'll do is, you know, submit those. And then once you are accepted into the program, you'll need to provide your official transcripts. Um, so like for students who, you know, are in their last semester in a program, you can go ahead and apply, send your unofficials. You know, once you receive those and you're admitted to the program, you will be able to provide your official transcripts. Um, the next two are kind of similar. Does GSU accept three-year bachelor's degrees? Um, and then I have three years in diploma and two years in degree. Do I qualify for the master's program without any evaluation? Um, typically, our admissions team will evaluate those. Um, if you want to, please send those to me. I can reach out to the admissions team, have them take a cursory look. Um, then I can follow up with you after that. So Ayush and, and Joshua, I've put my email in the chat. If you want to send me you know, your unofficials or your officials, um, and then I can get an answer for you guys that way. Uh, so from Stanley, how often do students interact with professors and alumni? I guess these factors uh, for help in teaching and learning, do students have opportunities of meeting one-on-one -on -one with professors and alumni? Uh, so on the alumni side, absolutely. Um, again, through either our student experience team, or our graduate career advancement team, um, they're going to host events uh, with alumni to come in and network. Um, they're also going to be coming into classes and serving as speakers. Um, so you can connect with them in that way. Um, Janae, I'll pivot to you, you know, kind of talk a little bit more about the interaction between student and professors while they're in the program. Absolutely. And then I'll hand it over to Gabrielle to, to reflect <laughs> on her experience, I guess, uh, what she had. Uh, but in terms of the professors, all of them have a very open door policy to start off with, which means you'll get to interact and spend time with them during the course sessions as well as before and after. And they will always be open uh, to your requests to have one-on-ones as necessary that go beyond regular office hours uh, that may be defined. So we all of us are here on the basis of uh, helping you out, move in your career through uh, the MIB program and become uh, more competent uh, in your professions, in your career development. And within that, we will always try to uh, increase the number of interactions or uh, events that we'll be organizing to bring together alumni and professors. I mean, again, this fall, uh, Justina, you, know, you may want to uh, point that out as well. We had an orientation. We had a get together with the professors, events where the court students basically met their professors in person, even before they took uh, their courses from that professor uh, and get to chat, etc. Because all of our faculty are actively involved in what's going on around the world as far as international business is concerned. So in their fields of activity, uh, they're all well equipped of uh, talking about relevant matters, which all of which are tied to the course content. I mean, I'm talking from the faculty side. Gabriel, you were on the recipient side of all this. I mean, uh, would you agree? Would you Did you experience a similar uh, approach? Yes, definitely. And, and what I liked the most, too, was um, the professors were not only teaching the concepts, but they were practitioners. So they were working within those roles. Uh, the procurement professor that I had during my program, he worked at Bank of America. So he was a procurement manager and he was teaching the concepts and also relating it back to his experiences, the the supply chain course that I took as well, that professor at the time, I believe he had, um, 
extensive experience within uh, Walmart, if I'm not mistaken. So he uh, went through the full um, class uh, relating it back to Walmart and how they manage um, supply chain and, and logistics and um, all of these, you know, different classes. Like I said, having professors that are practitioners in those roles were um, very beneficial. And also with um, Dr. Doria for my capstone of connecting with um, a lot of different companies for what we needed to do in, in order to finish up the program. Um, they have a lot of connections and knowledge in the industry as well. And that was um, extremely beneficial to be able to connect with um, employers and uh, the areas that you're pursuing. So, All right. Thank you, Gabrielle. So um, I did see a couple of questions um, in the chat regarding the MBA. Um, so I did put Liz Rivera's information into the chat. She is the recruiter for the MBA program. Um, so if you're looking, you know, for your qualifications for the MBA program or anything like that, um, her email is in the chat. I did see one question that I did want to uh, pivot to you, uh, Janae, if we have a couple of more moments. Um, where did it go? Um, so it was regarding um, pre-program work. Um, so yeah, are the pre-program courses for students without a quantitative background part of graded credit hours for MIB program? <laughs> uh, if so, what is the percent of the pre-course to the main course? Okay, the pre-program <laughs> modules that I talked about uh, are not... Uh, <laughs> okay. The, let me repeat that. Uh, the pre-program modules are not, uh, the grades for them are not part of your MIB uh, GPA. You just need to score a uh, minimum of 80 in the different quizzes, uh, which are pretty straightforward, of all the five modules that you'll be asked to complete. That this is, as I said, requirement for those of you that do not have a business major. But if you already have one, it's not uh, required. It's basically recommended for refreshing uh, what uh, you already went through before. So there will be a grade to make sure that you are qualified to pass through the basic concepts, but the grade will not become part of the credits for the MIB uh, program. I hope that clarifies. And then, guys, does that, is that respond uh, enough? Did you get your answer, uh, your question answered? Yes, thank you. Thank you, Paul. My question is well answered. All right. I appreciate that. All right. All right. Um, so, again, I see two or three more questions. Um, so, yes, that's already in the chat. Liz Rivera is over the NBA. You'll see her email there if you look, scroll up just a little bit. Um, it's Rivera 17 at GSU. Um, one thing that I did want to clarify um, and so I saw that in the chat a couple of times as far as a um, fee waiver for MBA. Um, so, no, it would have to be MIB, Masters of International Business. Um, I did put that link up in the chat a little bit earlier if you want to research some of our other opportunities for application fee waiver eligible events. Um, but again, um, to be conscious of everyone's time, I will go ahead and drop my email in the chat one more time. If I did not get to your question please reach out to me via email. Um, that way we connect and I can answer any questions that we didn't get to today. Um, I also want to thank Justina, Gabrielle, and Junaid for joining in today. Um, thanks for being here. Thanks for all of your wonderful insight. Um, again, thank you for all of our participants. I have put my email in the chat again, so please feel free to connect with me if you have any other questions. Uh, but thanks for joining us today, and I look forward to hearing from all of you guys in the future. Thanks for being with us today.